What's going on, everybody? It's real with Jordan and Demi. Look at that intro. I'm Jordan Edwards alongside Demi Ramos. Demi, how you doing? Great. We have um, an LA kid today. Yeah, we have an LA kid. Uh, started out as a producer mm -hmm. and got into beat making and started do making his own tracks, rapping a little bit, blew up on TikTok. And we'll tell, we'll get his whole story, his whole what's going on now, you know, because I also want to talk mostly about the present as opposed to the past. But let's bring him out right now. Swick of the child, what's going on, man? <laughs> With his baby, sir. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to ask, first of all, um, are you still using the child as part of your name or is that like passe? Uh, so I, I dropped it from like my artist name, but I still haven't got just at Swaco on like Instagram yet. So it's just, I kind of know, I don't know. It's still like kind of in the air. It's kind of like both. Okay. That's Swaco the child on Instagram, but like on my TikTok and like my Spotify, I dropped it. Okay. And for those who don't know, you have, you are of uh, Swedish descent and Swaco means Swedish in Spanish. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. You got okay. that. Did the research. Let's go. I did do the research. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We're all about the research here. This is basically NPR is what this is, you know. So basically. What are you wearing today? Do you have like a cool t-shirt? Uh, it's a Chinatown Market shirt. Oh, I guess they're just Market now. Born Again Christian Dior. I don't know. It's a cool shirt. I like cut it up. I'm homies with the with the guy. Have you, you know that brand? Market? I Chinatown Market? I do not know. No, we're not aware. Yeah, so we he, get 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 a free plug right now. You know. Yeah, there you go. They're the homies. Chinatown Market. Dylan is my homie. He works there. He's like one of the like head managers now. Me and my yeah. manager Lucas in the back. We're actually about to drop <laughs> our first. Uh, uh, so we have a brand. Shit, I might as well plug it. Where's the Where's the hat? Oh, where's the hat? Where's the hat? There we go. Yeah, yeah we're so we're drop. We this is our brand. It's called Attempted Lover. And uh, we're about to drop our first line actually as a collab with Market uh, pretty soon. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So this is, this show is brought to you by Chinatown Market. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to start with your current stuff oh. right now, um, your current music. You have uh, uh, the single out, uh, uh, Paralyzed. And... Oh. It's really kind of a uh, more of a, I don't know, more of a rock. You're kind of leaning into a, more of a rock sound these days. Yes. Um, so tell us about this track and is it indicative of the rest of, of future music that's coming out soon? Yeah, 100%. I'm finalizing the album right now. Uh, and yeah, it's all kind of more uh, like rock. Oh, yeah, look there. That's the, that's the cover art. That's the cover art. And by the way, I love like 90s beamers, like with the four headlights. Yeah, I, don't know I don't know whose car that is, but uh, you know, it's it's, it's a sick car. Oh, we split it. Nice, nice. Um, and the and the low cut and the low low top docks with the white socks. That's a look. That's a look. Yeah, throwing it back. Yeah, you actually have a hardcore rock background playing in bands you played as a drummer and yes. then you started to scream and i've always been so fascinated by screamers because i i mean I've, I've tried it it just doesn't come out um how does how does that work for you how did you translate that into your music today uh i don't know that was just like the that was just my first real like expression of music and it kind of just evolved i was just expressing my music different ways throughout my life and then now i feel it's a, it's a culmination of all of it because i mean obviously clearly it's rock music it's like emo it's like kind of like this post hardcore sound that i that i really like grew up listening to and loving but then it's incorporating uh like a lot of synths and a lot of like crazy weird cinematic stuff i, I like a lot of the hyper pop coming out now so i like how it's all like crunchy and like a lot of high end kind of distortion and then obviously I'm still like kind of rapping a little bit. So it's kind of just a culmination of everything I feel like. And that's, and Paralyze is really indicative of everything that's about to come out. It's all kind of that blend of genres. Well, let's take it back a little bit. You started making beats 
not rapping or singing, correct? Like you were more of a producer beat maker before you started doing vocals. Oh, well, no. So my, my very first musical thing was uh, playing the drums in the church. Sure, sure, sure. I'm, I'm sorry. I meant like, as a, the first thing you made money on, I saw another interview was beats. The first thing. Yeah. yeah the first thing I made money. Yeah. Was, I mean, I wasn't even really making that much money, but yeah, it was beats and like mixing and like recording people. That was the very first thing. And, and I started going viral in uh, 2018 for making beats out of weird sounds on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So like a beat out of a condom. Yeah, there was what, a condom and there was like a butt beat or something. Yeah. yeah. And like, remember when the grape meme was a thing? Like they did surgery on a grape. We did a yeah. beat out of a grape. Like that. <laughs> Way to follow the trends, man. You, uh, you're you on top of it. You're on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, do you still kind of consider yourself a producer, even though you do the vocals now um, and you write your own songs? Do you, in your heart, do you kind of see yourself as a producer? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I always kind of saw myself I feel like being a producer is kind of just an extension of being an artist. I yeah. feel like it's kind of the same thing. It's just, I don't know. There's just different ways of, of doing the same thing. So I, I mean, like example now with all the music that I'm making now, uh, I may like put a couple things here and there. Oh, cool. It's me. So with the, yeah, with the music I'm making now, I'll at least co-produce everything. So what that means is, you know, I'll be in the studio and I'll be like, mm, I think this should go here. Like this should go here. Uh, and like, just kind of throw in ideas. But a lot of the people I'm working with, like Colin Britton and uh, Doily, they're just so good at what they do. Like so musically talented that I kind of just let them run free and just kind of give advice. Growing up in the church, um, it's just some, it's an interesting thing about you that I didn't expect because you've got this dark side and I guess like doing music, hardcore music, it's not very, the most traditional path to take. So what was that like growing up in the church and as an only child? Uh, so, so repeat the question you said, I was like transitioning from church music to like hardcore, is that what you said? Just, yeah. What was it like growing up in the church and like your, what were your parents, you know, what, what kind of morals did you learn from your parents and things like More. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so like, my dad was the choir director. Yeah. And then my mom was uh, just like a singer in the choir. So I kind of just, that was just kind of a thing growing up. And uh, yeah, my mom was really the one that was like super religious and like, like, yeah, like strong family morals like, type. And uh, I don't know. And then my dad kind of, he, he, I mean, obviously he, he, you know, he was kind of just in it more for the music because he liked to play music, all right? Uh, and yeah, it, so we kind of, what what happened was my mom, like, uh, she got breast cancer when I was younger and she, uh, she passed away when I was 15. And so well, when that happened, uh, she, she was a teacher, she was a school teacher and she was like making, like she was like supporting the family. And so then uh, it was just me at the house because my dad started working as a truck driver. Uh, and that's really when I kind of had to grow up really fast because it was just me. And that's when I kind of dove into music because I realized I, I like I'm at this, uh, even though I was so young, I was like, I'm at this kind of crucial stage. I can either like fuck up my life or I can make something out of my life. And I didn't want to fuck my life up. I wanted to make something of it. Yeah, I was going to ask how you handled it, uh, being on, having all this time to yourself, making yourself grow quickly. If you stay out of trouble, or if you, you know, stayed a good kid and and did the right thing, I guess. I mean, I was I was like doing dumb shit and like off the drugs and stuff like earlier. I got that out like earlier. Like it was kind of when like my mom passed that I kind of like pulled myself together. So I, I pulled myself together pretty young, but I also fucked up really young. So. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, now you've, I'm sure you've retold the story about blowing up on TikTok over and over again with fast, which was your breakout hit a few years ago. I don't want to have, make you say the whole story. You tell the whole story over again, but I'm curious. I don't want to talk about blowing up on TikTok. I want to talk about the song fast itself. Um, did you create it? with the intention of this could be viral or was it a beat and a, a hook that you just kind of had floating around that you decided to, to put out into the world? 
so the beat, I remember what I was trying to do was, um, that was right when like Shot of Flow came out and was blowing up, like NLE Choppa. And I remember I was like, hmm, I want to make like a beat that slaps like that, like that hard, but at a West Coast tempo, like 100 BPM. And so that was like, that was the inspiration for the beat. And then honestly, the lyrics kind of just came, like they just came out of nowhere. I don't really even know where they came from. This is kind of like, sounded like cool on the beat. Uh, and yeah, I didn't have an intention of it going viral. Obviously, I like when, once the song was done, I sent it around and people loved it. Uh, but I didn't know it was going to go like that. LA, you rep LA, um, but you've lived in Puerto Rico. So I'm kind of curious, are you going to be adding any Spanish elements to your music anytime soon? Maybe, maybe at some point, you know, I, I, my Spanish, it's, it's a little rusty. It's not as good as it used to be. I'll be honest. You know, I lived in, so I lived in Puerto Rico when I was uh, still going to university before I dropped out. And I was part of a research program out there for uh, computational linguistics. Like, uh, th that's what I was studying before I dropped out of school. Um, yeah, that's one thing that fascinated about, uh, about me, uh, fascinated me about you when I was researching was this, you studied artificial intelligence. You had, you were interested in AI and responsiveness of, of AI assistance, you know, that kind of thing. Language. Yeah. Spoken right. language. So I don't know how much you've kept, how much you've paid attention to that world since you dropped out. But let's talk about how do you feel about the state of AI right now? Um, you know, Amazon just revealed their home robot and the Boston yeah. uh, Dynamics robo dog is insane. Uh, how do you feel about where we're at right now? Do you feel terrified or do you feel encouraged about where I don't we're know, at? I feel like, I feel like it's uh, inevitably going to happen. Like uh, eventually, so like eventually AI is going to take over. Right. Eventually it is going to be smarter than us. It just, just, it's just going to happen. Right. So there's not, I don't even think it's like a terrified or like being scared. <laughs> of it. It's just uh, being prepared for it and building systems into places so we don't fuck ourselves up. So it's an inevitability kind of thing. I, I think, I mean, technology always improves. Technology always advances. It's all, it always has, and it always will. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's going to get there. When? I don't, I don't know. Do you see a future of like robots versus humans? I mean, I hope not. And what would you think if that were the I, case? I, I hope they're nice to us. <laughs> well, you know, you being in the music world, there's that has become more uh, automated as time goes on. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's programs, algorithms that can make beats, that kind of thing. Are you worried about the human element being sucked out of music production? Uh, I mean, I, part of me as an artist wants to say, no, there's always going to be something that's a human element, right? That you can't replicate. And it's like, and it sounds corny, but it's like the soul, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But also, there's been like beats and like melodies and and songs that are written by computers that yes like that robot. Do you that robot? there was like a robot like two years ago that came out that like was known to like make music or something mm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I, I remember there's i saw this one thing um it was like a robot they fed it a whole bunch of nirvana songs and it like uh it rewrote it like wrote new Nirvana songs. It didn't like play it, but it like wrote them. Like in like, the style of Nirvana. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, the, yeah, in the style. Yeah, they wrote uh, they wrote like new Nirvana songs, and uh, it, th there was like a live band that played it. Like humans played it, but the like the computer wrote it. I think I saw that. That's freaky. That cool. Yeah, it's kind of freaky. Yeah. yeah, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. That stresses me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, I saw another, in my research, as you point out that I, I'm good at research, I saw this interview, I read this interview where you talked about, you know, signing to Atlantic, you finally get to get out of your dad's place and get rid of your old Mini Cooper. Have you yeah. replaced the Mini Cooper with something badass yet? 
Yeah, I have uh, the 2017 BMW M2, and uh, we have the the E30. So you're you're a Beamer guy. You're like a Beamer guy. A little bit, a little bit. I, I like I like uh, I like the Beamers. They're nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's Thinking cool. about getting a motorcycle next. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure though. Everyone, everyone I tell that to says, "No, no, don't do it." But I'm no, my uncle, sure. like, like, uh, like old school, like. We need to at least do a music video with motorcycles, like a old school Rough Riders kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I could just do that. Yeah, and it get, get it out of your system. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and everyone would be would relax a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're from LA, right? You grew up there. Yeah, I grew up uh, in Pasadena. Like right on the border of Pasadena and Altadena. Okay. Okay. I, I'd spent New Year's in Pasadena once. It was freezing. People don't realize how cold it gets in the mountains up there in the winter oh, yeah. at night. Of like in Altadena up in the mountains, it gets pretty cold for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not snowing, but it's chilly. You need right, a jacket. Right, right, right. Since you were growing up in LA, did you, had you always wanted to be part of the entertainment industry just because it was right there, easy access? Uh, I would say, like, I never really knew anyone doing it or, like, in music, of, e even, like, all the way up until really, like, fast blew up. Even though I was going, like, going viral, I didn't mean I, like, really knew anyone. You, you get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. But, yeah. like, the reason why I wanted to do music in the first place, uh, it wasn't just because I was in L.A. or, like, easy access. It was just... Well, I made music. I created music because I didn't, when I was a kid, like I had trouble understanding my own emotions and I didn't know how I would feel. Uh, and I would write songs. I would write lyrics and then I would be able to look at the lyrics and go, okay, well, that's how I feel. Uh, right. So it was like, it was helping me understand my own emotions. And, you know, like I said, my mom passed away uh, when I was 15. That was music was, listening to other people's music and creating my own music was really the thing that brought me out of this deep, just dark place. And it helped me. And I, the reason I wanted to do music in the first place was because I wanted to help people the same way that it helped me. Uh, yeah. That's why I started. That's why I wanted to pursue it. It's a good answer. I'm really interested in your... <laughs> rock background that is actually genuine um They're actually genuine like well, as opposed to people who have fake rock backgrounds well no because right now rock is the moment as you know yeah i know what you're saying and there seems to be lots of people to just kind of try and copy rock music which you can't do with rock music you can do that with pop music you can emulate and pretend with pop music but with rock and roll you kind of can't fake that and you coming from that background i find that super cool and unique and the fact that you're bringing it to the mainstream is super cool. Um, how do you feel? Like, what are your favorite bands? Like hardcore bands? Like, shout them out. Like growing up, like what were my favorite? Growing up, yeah, current. Okay, um, so yeah. uh, on the more like mainstream side, I would say like shit like a day to remember, like asking Alexandria, Escape the Fate, oh. old Escape the Fate for sure. I never heard. Wow. Um, uh, I would say. I mean, it's more like emo, but Taking Back Sunday, that was super old by the time I was growing up. Sure. Um, Do you like Huh? Are you a fan of Turnstile by any chance? Yeah, I like, yeah, I fuck with them. They're cool. You like the new album? Yeah, no, it's sick. Interesting, right? Cool. Yeah, it's super cool. I like, I like what they're doing. A lot of people are talking about them. Yeah, man. It's a good it's thing. No, yeah, I'm going to take cool. that clip that just happened right now, and we're going to do a shout out to Turnstile. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you, are you guys homies with them type? No, Demi might be. Demi knows Demi knows a lot of people, but uh, <laughs> well, I guess we know a lot. We both know a lot of people, but no, I, I don't have any personal connection to them. Okay. Oh, I was just saying because I feel like bands like Turnstile, for instance, um, it's pretty cool how like hardcore bands are kind of coming into light into the mainstream, or like Blink One Eighty Two is coming back with new music. It's kind of cool. We're in a cool moment right now in music, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, all, all that is all uh, like. The, the the whole pop punk thing obviously is like back and what that means is all the sub genres and iterations that spawn from that are also going to come back mm -hmm. right so like all the all the emo stuff the scene stuff i think is gonna 
that's like the next thing. You, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm waiting for that dashboard confessional resurgence to happen. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just had Matt Pryor from the get up kids on the show a few weeks ago and we got to really go in depth about the whole emo screamo, you know, kind of world, which is really fun. Um, you speaking of Blink 182, you know, you did a collaboration with Travis Barker um, yeah. on uh, on the song SOS. And mm -hmm. what's interesting about Travis Barker is that's how he makes his living now is he's going around to these younger artists and playing drums on their singles. And we've had at least what two or three guests on the show that have had a Travis Barker um, collaboration. So a, he must be really good at this kind of thing and B he must be a good collaborator, fairly easy to work with. So tell us about how that got started and what it was like to work with him. Okay. Well, I mean, literally we've been, we've been, uh, he followed me and like, I don't even, I, yeah. So he, I remember he had followed me like around the time the fast blew up. Uh, and I didn't even know, like, I just looked at his page one day and it said follow back and I like fucking freaked out. Uh, and then I remember, you know, we were kind of talking back and forth for a while, a really long time. And eventually I sent him, uh, SOS. I already had a demo I made with, uh, my, my friend Willie and yeah, he loved it. And he just hopped, uh, he, he, we sent him the track and he, he, uh, put some drums on and sent it back super easy. He's a cool guy. Mm. Hey, so have you you you've met him in person? Yeah, yeah, of course, met him okay, in person. Okay, so, okay, yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah, he's cool. It's cool because he's kind of a link between the previous generation, the pop punk, the first '90s, 2000s, and your generation. It's kind of cool that there's a link. Yeah, right there. he's a link for sure. He's one of them. Yeah, yeah. What other collaborations can we expect too from you? I'm kind of curious. What can you divulge? Mm -hmm. Looks back at the manager. Like, what can I say? <laughs> What am I allowed to say? Or no, let's call him the child sitter. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I can, I don't think I can, but I am announcing some tours pretty soon. That was a great tease regardless. The look back at the manager and then <laughs> I can't say anything. Chef's kiss. Yeah. yeah that was great. That was great. <laughs> Head off I your manager. I, 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 like, I forgot. <laughs> what did you um, say, Demi? As a shout out to your manager. I mean, we, this is the first time we've had someone's manager in the room with his artist. That's yeah. Yeah. Back up. All, all he needs is, is a cigar and a pair of like aviator tinted aviator sunglasses. That would be like the look that would finish the look. Well, we'll get, get you some, the next interview. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so you can't talk about maybe specific things, but since we talked about, you know, you're going in this heavier rock direction. Um, are you doing, are you going to come out with a full, full album? Cause I, it's been a couple yeah, of years. Yeah. So uh, I'm working on the album right now. It's a uh, production is pretty much finalized. I need to mix it. Uh, the working title is, uh, it was fun while it lasted. That's the, that's the working title of the album. I think that'll be the final name, but I'm not sure yet. Well, we'll hold you to that. We'll pull this out. If you change it, we'll pull this out and say, gotcha. this, is what, this is what it could have been. This is what it could have been. Could've been. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So that, that should be coming out pretty soon. Like I said, we're pretty much almost done, and so like very soon it'll be coming out. Now we we briefly touched on you know that you that you came through that you know fast blew up and your TikTok blew up and that and that's been kind of a common tale in the last couple of years. The you blow up on TikTok gets the attention of record labels. You signed to a record label and then you you knew you had the remix with um with uh who's on the uh someone from uh, offset and uh hoodie, hoodie with a hoodie yeah 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 so now that you're on a major label you have more support what are you hoping to do with that newfound position like is there a master plan or is it you taking it day by day put the album out see what happens what do you mean is there a master plan like do i have like, some are, I mean, are you going to do, or do you have like a tour planned? Do you have music videos lined up? Like, is it a whole deal? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like literally everything. Like I said, the album's almost done. We're going to be doing like full rollout. And like I said, uh, I'm going on tour. Uh, there's two big tours that I'm going to be uh, going on. I can't, I, I don't think I can say the names, but it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be, we're doing everything. Everything's going to be great. 
<laughs> Everything's gonna be great. Love it. Love it. I'm really curious about your tattoos here. I don't have any tattoos, but I always wondered how bad it hurts. And I'm also wondering mm. about this one. What is this tattoo you have here? And did it really hurt? Did you do that? Yeah, it hurt really bad. It's a cartoon skull. I don't know. I thought it, it sounds shallow, but I already like my first couple tattoos had like a lot of meaning. But after I had like two or three, I was just like, mm -hmm. I just want to get cool shit. Like, what's the worst? What's like the funniest tattoo that you have? Uh, hold on. Hi, thanks. <laughs> was that was that a stick and poke? Is that a stick and poke, or did you? No, it was just like no. I literally went. I I only had like two tattoos. And I went to the went to the shop and I was just like, fuck it, because I just I had this idea. I was I was just hi thanks because in my brain I was like, How many times in my life have I said hi or thanks? What if I can yeah. just go like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, every now and then when I remember, I'll do it and it'll take people a second, but then they see it and then they like laugh or whatever. Right. Well, it's the high one's kind of awkward because you do that right away. It looks like you're like giving them like talk to the hand, like it's the nineties or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, we have this little rapid fire question game we do with our guests to get them know to get to know them a little bit more beyond just, you know, the talking points. So we'd like to uh play that with you now if if you if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. All right, good. All right, man. So we're gonna do this and our even though uh we're going to make it kind of hip hop themed about your favorite rappers, that kind of thing. So oh. the first question is, um, who was your favorite rapper growing up? Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Wow. That makes you sound so young that growing up your favorite rapper is Kendrick Lamar, but that's okay. Really? I, make, I feel like that makes me feel old. Like everyone, I guess everyone, it's all about perspective. Anyone but, yeah, um, not, probably not going to say Kendrick. But I, I love, um, for me, it was Money Trees. It was like the song that got me hooked on Kendrick. Love that song. That whole album is amazing. Whose flow did you try to emulate? Did you try to emulate him when you started rapping? Did you, anyone you kind of modeled after? Uh, kind of Kendrick, but he, do, but he doesn't really have like a singular, like one singular flow. I, I, honestly, I would probably say I've, I tried to emulate more production styles than like than like rapping styles interesting like the uh when i first started making beats it was definitely dj mustard that's what i was trying to make beats like okay for. okay i can hear that uh, totally. And, totally like when i first started and then i would say like i love i always loved how kanye as a producer he would always it was always super dynamic and like switch things up at like the weirdest times and he would use like like the voice like vocal elements throughout the production as instruments. And I yeah. Really that. How do you feel about Kanye's current situation? I mean, it's, it's good music. I like it. It's not my favorite Kanye music, but I, I don't know. You always, there's always, as an artist, as their career progresses, you're always going to like reminisce about like yeah. what it used to be, right? But that's the same with anything. Do you aspire to record an album inside a football stadium? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> and, get, and get everyone that you can imagine on the track, even if they're just playing woodblock, get, you know, like Sting or Madonna to play woodblock on your on your track. That's what you need to do. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, do you remember your first rhyme? No. Okay. I didn't think you would, but I thought I'd try, you know, because some people do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like your like nice track. <laughs> have, you, have, you, has any, have you asked that to anyone? Has anyone given you like this was my first? So rock. I'm gonna go back to that question yeah. here. Dead ass, dead ass. This is where it came from. Because I was <laughs> watching an interview with Ice Cube, Ice Cube, and it was some like TV like press junket thing. And he was like, yeah, I remember it was, my name is Ice Cube and here to say, and he like had this whole riff that his first thing he ever wrote. So I was like, I'm going to try that sometime, see if it okay. works. But it, but it did not, it did not work. It failed. Yeah, okay. Right. okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> who would you love to do a guest verse for? Like, who would you love? Like if someone called you, who would you want that phone call to be from? It could be any artist. Yeah. 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 Shit. Probably Green Day. Probably. Green Day. Yeah. Wow. That would, that would be like, so my, fir my first two albums that I ever, like, so my first album that I ever bought 
with my own money was Green Day. It was American Idiot. That was my first album I ever bought. Good album. Yeah, with my with my own money. So I would probably say, yeah, Green Day. That's Full the circle. closest to my like heart. And I feel like this is the kind of climate where that could that could legitimately happen. That could that would, totally happen. That'd be so fucking cool. Yeah. But uh, apparently it's not already in the works because you wouldn't be telling us if it was in the works. So, yeah. yeah no, that one. I, you know what? Next album. Next album. History. Yeah. Uh, so is Kendrick still your favorite rap? Like, this question, what I meant by this question is, like, is there anyone like newer that you're like, man, this, this person's great? Anyone new that's kind of caught your attention? Um, like I'm saying, uh, I'm listening to a lot of like the hyper pop kids now, okay. uh, like the, the new wave of SoundCloud rappers. I, I would say like my favorite out of all, like the new wave stuff is, uh, Glaive and he's like a more hyper pop artist and then cash down. He's more like a rapper. So like, okay. the, like a newer type of wave. Those are my two favorites. I'm going to look those up so I can be as, you know, on the, on the edge of things as you are after, after this interview. Uh, Let me know what you think of them. Yeah. How much unreleased music is on your computer? A whole lot. I got a whole lot of songs on my computer. I was wondering how much of a, of a, of a hoarder you were when it came to music. So I would say I'm more of a, I'm just going to, again, sound like a, like, like self-absorbed, but I'm more of like a quality over quantity type, like writer. Like a lot, I know a lot of people that can just smash out like hella songs, like yeah. multiple songs a day. I can't do that. It takes I, me like I know you don't you don't have seven mixtapes out. You don't have like the Jay Dilla Donuts Volume One, Two, and Three out. You know? No, I don't. I wish. I, sometimes I wish I could write like faster, but I don't know. I just pay attention. I. It takes me a while because I really like pay attention to what I'm saying. And I really like trying to say the best thing and like have the best like substance or writing or whatever you want to say. I gotcha. I gotcha. Will you ever make a straight hip hop album? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I was curious if it was in your like realm at all, or if you're just like way past it, everything I want uh, to do is hybrid uh, now. I don't, well, I, I don't know. Everything I'm making is like this hybrid. Right. So I don't think I'm ever going to make something that fits in one. Even, I guess you could say everything I'm making now is obviously like rock. But I don't know. I feel like it's more than that because it is combining all these elements. So What's funny? Never, go ahead. You well, you really like you 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 like the sound of that late '90s, early 2000s sound. And it's interesting that that was also kind of a, a when people were really trying to combine rock and rap. But it was always kind of forced. It felt like a novelty. It felt like here's a rocker, here's a rap group. Let's put them together. But this era feels more organic and feels more like it's coming together naturally. Does that? Does that sound about right to you? I would I would say I would somewhat agree. And I think I think that's the case because of someone like Juice World or someone like Trippy Red. A sure. lot of their a lot of their flows are are, are a lot more melodic and mm -hmm. a lot more like like rock influenced or whatever you, you, you might right. want to say. And so combining those type of flows with you know like live drums and stuff. It still feels like how rap feels now, but it's 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 the live drums is really what takes it into like not being a what people would think is a rap song. Oh, Even absolutely. Even a lot of the flows are kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say that's probably why it feels like that. If that's if got that you, sense. got you totally, totally. Yeah, Demi's like Demi's right in the middle of like working on her new album and stuff, and so she's like picking up some production tips right now. I can tell. Uh, yeah. yeah. The mind's working. Yeah. Cool. yeah what yeah. do you think about? What's it sound like? It sounds like 808s and distorted electric guitar. Oh, cool. Yeah. Love yeah. That. And her her single, just brag on you, Demi, is almost up to a hundred thousand streams without uh, any without any music video, without any promotion, without a record label. And so props to Demi right there. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um I think that's about it for us. That's about it for us. Uh, so we can really appreciate your time here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. 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 We look forward to the new album and uh, all this rock stuff that's coming out. Oh yeah. No, dude, it's going to be so cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to 
share it with everyone. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. That'll be it. So uh, we'll uh, thank you so much to Swaco. All right. All right. That was, I, I was genuinely, um, you know. Uh, Interesting person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I was curious, you know, uh, if you were getting anything vibes from him in terms of your production, because you're kind of you're in this realm, this sort of hybrid rock hip hop kind of world. Yeah, I think it's like I said, it's super cool that someone who actually has a rock background is using that experience and bringing it to the mainstream. And I think it's genuine and it's exciting. That's what I love about you, Jamie. You are such an advocate for genuine rock music. You're like carrying it forward. Take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that'll be it for us today. Next week, we will be back with the band Weathers. So until then, we will see you later.